It's real easy to get lost in the world of holsters when you're brand new to buying a pistol. So we're going to go through some of the choices that you're going to face and break down some of these different types of products for you. Stick around. joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for joining us and for helping our channel get good traction. If you like what we're doing, hit the like, hit the share, and also hit that little bell for instant notifications. If you really like what we're doing and want to partner up with us, come find us on Patreon. Anyway, for today's segment, we want to talk a little bit about the wonderful world of holsters. And there's a lot to learn if you're just getting started. There's a lot of different types, there's a lot of different materials, and we just kind of want to break down the various different products for you so that you've got a better idea of what you're looking for once you go in to buy holsters. They're not cheap, so let's get you educated before you go out and spend your hard-earned money. Anyway, um, I brought in a range of different products today. We've got a couple pistols on the table, and just like we always do, we want to show safe and clear so that uh, we don't have to worry about any problems or any big surprises later on. Today I've got the HK and I've got the CZ. Uh, I brought them out with, as well as some different types of holsters to talk about. And, and the first thing to do is get educated on some of the terms. Um, for people that want to wear inside the waistband, it's commonly known as an IWB. Same thing if you want to wear outside the waistband, it's known as OWB. So you're going to hear um, people using those three-letter acronyms around the gun store, so that's what it all means. And you're going to find in the world of holsters the two biggest materials that have really uh, uh, make up the bulk are going to be either leather or Kydex. Um, these are the two main choices that you're going to face, and they each have different uh, uh, qualities that make them very, very popular. And, and we're going to start um, with outside the waistband holsters. Now, what you want to be looking for with an outside the waistband holster, or for uh, even an inside the waistband holster, is something we like to refer to as retention. Something that's going to hold the firearm into the holster to make sure that if you trip or spill, the gun's not going to go skittering across the floor. Now, for instance, it's real important that you buy holsters that are actually made and formed to the individual pistol. One of the things that you want to avoid as best you can is buying a universal holster. You want this to be tailored to fit the individual pistol. You also want to make sure that you have a trigger guard which is covered so that nothing can sneak in here and set off your trigger, especially if you're carrying with a round in the chamber. Now, the retention that this comes with, very popular, is known as what's called a thumb brake. And in order to use the thumb brake, when you draw, you're going to push down with your thumb, which is going to help you access the pistol. Now, this particular type of holster is what's known as a pancake. It fits very flat. Um, what I like about the pancake holster is, is that when you cinch it up in the belt, it is going to form to your body. Um, it's got a very wide surface area, which means that it's going to carry the weight very, very well. So because of that, I'm a big fan of, you know, the old school, what we call a pancake holster. Now, what I also wanted to talk to you about was training holsters. And this is an outside the waistband holster. This is from a company called Phobos. And for training and learning, you know, how to be safe using the draw, the Phobos holster is a great way to go. Not terribly expensive. You can pick them up for under $30. And you can actually hear it click into place. That's your retention there. You actually have to pull it very um, distinctly and very deliberately to get the holster to unlock and release the gun. 
Now, the other thing that I really like about the Phobos holster for training is the fact that this is what's known as a paddle holster. You can put this inside your waistband, um, inside your pants, and you can see where it actually has these little locking hooks that go in underneath your belt. So you can do um, holster work with this. It's very secure and you can put it inside your belt. Um, you'll also notice that with this screw right here, you can actually loosen this so that you can adjust the cant of the holster. And the cant of the holster has to do with the angle that it sits relative to your belt line. Some people like it straight up and down. Some people like to adjust the cant to where it's, it's uh, forward a little bit. So something like the Phobos holster is a great choice. You can even use this for concealed carry if you wear some clothes that are a little bit larger. Now, those are both what you would call outside the waistband. We're we'll talking a little bit about inside the waistband. Now, inside the waistband, very often you're going to see that they're going to come with a, uh, a steel spring clip that when it goes inside your pants, this is going to lock over your belt. Just like that. You want to make sure you've got one that has a really good tension so it doesn't work its way off. So when this also is um, actually set up for my CZ right here, just to illustrate how this all works, is this is also going to give you a, um, the same sort of thumb brake that's going to hold the gun in place when you're carrying it. I'm not going to snap it up just because. But this is going to give you a nice easy way to carry it if you're, if you're doing CCW. And because it goes inside the waistband, it is going to tuck away nice and close. It's going to be very much, you know, less visible to anybody that's looking for it. Now, one of the things that you want to look for if you're going to be going with leather with an inside the waistband is you want to make sure that this area here is, you know, a double thickness of a very stiff leather. And here's why. If you have this inside your waistband and you draw out the pistol, this can crush, which means it's going to be very difficult to reholster that. This is going to give you that extra rigidity, which is going to help keep the gun um, able to be reholstered in a, in a safer manner. Now, it's also worth saying that if you carry something like this, it may be difficult enough to reholster that you may actually want to actually pull the holster out, reholster the gun, and then re-put it back into your waistband. So that's one of the trade-offs that you're going to get by carrying inside the waist, is you have to understand that there's going to be a certain amount of crushability of the holster. Now, um, this is a Kydex holster, and um, these are from our good friends over at 951 Tactical, and Aaron can set you up with one of these. Um, this particular one here is actually set up for outside the waistband, but the, the way these are set up is you can actually um, tell the guys over at 951 whether you want to carry it inside the waistband or outside the waistband for a clip here. Now the beauty of that is the fact that when you put the pistol in, it completely locks into place. And the beauty of Kydex, if you're going to go with an inside the waistband holster, is it will not crush. So for inside the waistband, sometimes having a Kydex is going to give you a much safer feature for if you're going to be doing a lot of consecutive holster work, making sure the holster doesn't collapse under the tension created by your belt. Now the last one I wanted to get into, in many ways, is going to uh, give you the best of both worlds. And this is what's called a hybrid holster. And this is, comes from a company called Fox that actually has two X's. So Fox Holsters makes what's called a hybrid holster, meaning it's got both a leather piece as well as a Kydex piece so that you have 
something that's going to mold naturally to your skin and be comfortable, but also something that is going to stay rigid and open so that when you are working on the draw, you have a, uh, a platform which is going to not be able to be crushed and you're going to be able to safely draw and reholster over and over again. Now, this particular holster from Fox comes with a very sturdy built clip and you can actually get them in a couple of different models for whether they sit higher or lower on your waist. Um, you can also tell from this adjustment screw that you can adjust the cant forward or back. One of the nice extras is you can also have this extra um, pad added as, a, as an, uh, an option and this actually feels really good up against your skin if you don't like the feel of plastic. So a hybrid holster is going to give you the best of both worlds and you know you can, you can hear the click as it retains but that's actually going to tighten up when you have it inside your belt. So a hybrid holster is going to be another one of your options for you to check out when you're looking for holsters and you can expect to pay anywhere from twenty five to a hundred dollars for a holster. Uh, it's it's, it's a, a pretty big price spread. For the most part um, I could say I've probably spent for most of my holsters probably about the fifty dollar mark. But this, got, this way you don't go in and you don't get sticker shock when you're looking for a holster. Anyway, this kind of wraps up some of the various things that you should be looking for. And it's also worth saying that uh, be very careful, get training from a professional when you're doing holster work. The vast majority of accidents happen at the holster. So you need to be very careful when you're learning holster work and learn from a professional exactly all the steps that you need to go through to safely do it. Anyway, we want to thank you all for stopping in again and watching us here on Shoot of the Series. My name's Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. For more information, you can check the information box below and we'll give you links to the different companies that we're talking about. Anyway, y'all take care.